As someone who has gone on close to 100 coding interviews and has broken into FANG, I've learned a thing or two about coding interviews. That's why in this video, I'm gonna share all the things you need to know to prepare for your next coding interview the right way. And what better way to prepare than with everyone's favorite website, LeetCode. Love it or hate it, it's become the most common way to prep for coding interviews and I will teach you how to use LeetCode to supercharge your interview prep. By the end of this video, you'll have a solid game plan you can use to start solving LeetCode problems faster and more efficiently. But before we dive in, I just wanna say that my mission is to get 1,000 people into tech. So if you wanna join me on this journey, then make sure to subscribe to my channel. All right, let's get into it. So you might be asking yourself, why should I use LeetCode? Can I get a job without it? And the answer to that is yes, you can. Many smaller companies like startups might not follow traditional big tech interview formats. They focus more on your actual skills and experience, which you could argue is the better way to conduct interviews, but that's a topic for a different video. The reason for LeetCode's popularity is simply that big tech companies like Amazon, Meta, Google, and many more all love to ask LeetCode style questions. So if your goal is to work at a big name tech company and make a crazy high salary, then for better or for worse, LeetCode is the way to go. Next, you need to pick a programming language. Don't overthink this. Choose a mainstream programming language like Java, JavaScript, Python, or C++. Personally, I'm a huge fan of using Python for coding interviews because syntactically, it is the simplest to read on top of being very easy to pick up. The goal isn't even to be an expert. You just need to understand the basics. You know, loops, conditionals, writing functions, etc. If you choose to either use Java or C++, then make sure you understand how to use the collections library and the standard template library for each language respectively. Once you've settled on a programming language, then you need to learn computer science fundamentals. Things like data structures and big O notation. You will never be able to pass a coding interview without learning these, so this is crucial. I recommend first learning about time and space complexity, or big O notation. Learning this is crucial to understanding the efficiency of your algorithms. A useful site I used when first learning big O was the big O cheat sheet. Super useful for learning all the common runtimes for various operations on data structures. Speaking of which, when it comes to data structures, make sure you learn about the essentials. I'm talking about arrays, linked lists, trees, graphs, and many more. On top of these data structures, you should also be learning about sorting and searching algorithms, dynamic programming, and graph traversal algorithms. I recommend checking out YouTube channels like Free Code Camp, William Fissette, and Tushar Roy, which helped me learn these topics. Another helpful resource to help me learn data structures is called Visualgo. I highly recommend you go play around with it as it can help you see how the most common data structures work. Very good for visual learners. If you like reading books, then cracking the coding interview would be my number one choice. So after developing a good understanding of data structures and big O notation, you can now start lead coding. But don't just jump in and try to solve a bunch of problems. That's a good way to get burnt out and demotivated. Instead, I'm gonna show you how to tackle any question you come across. But to do this, you need to develop a solid study strategy. The key is to be consistent, as you wanna start preparing at least four to six weeks before a coding interview. That's why I recommend you start doing one to two problems daily. At first, just do easy problems, but then slowly start to introduce medium and hard problems when you feel more confident. It's also crucial to be self-aware of your strengths and weaknesses. For example, maybe you're good at array and string problems, but suck at dynamic programming. You then allocate more time to dynamic programming problems. One thing I like to do is time myself. I do this to try and mimic the interview setting as much as possible. In a real coding interview, you have at most one hour to come up with a solution. So struggling with a medium question for two hours isn't a realistic way to prepare. My general rule of thumb is to spend 30 to 45 minutes on easy questions and 45 minutes to an hour on medium and hard questions. Any longer and I stop what I'm doing and just look at the solution. You have to force yourself to think under a time constraint. It'll train you better for a real interview. But what should you do if you get stuck? Well, once that timer runs out, stop and look up the solution. Whether you look at the editorials that LeetCode has written for you or you find an explainer video on YouTube, it doesn't matter. The goal is to understand how the solution works as best you can. 
once you have a better understanding of how it works, mark it for review and come back to it later. I'd say give it at least a week before revisiting. Now that you have a solid study plan, how do you actually solve problems? Well, there is a proven problem solving formula that I've used in the past and it has never let me down. The formula can be broken down into three steps, brute force, bottlenecks, then optimize. Let's break down how it works. First, you have to start with a brute force solution. This is because no one expects you to have the right answer from the start. The goal of coding interviews is to show your interviewer your thought process. So starting with an inefficient solution lets you settle into the problem and improve on it later. At this stage, you must ask your interviewer clarifying questions. This can be about inputs, outputs, constraints, or the problem statement itself. Once you understand the problem well enough, you can begin to write out or even just describe your brute force solution to the interviewer. At this point, you wanna point out the main bottlenecks or inefficiencies with the current solution. Pay attention to things like nested loops, recursion, and sorting as those usually contribute to a higher runtime in your code. By identifying parts of your brute force that contribute to a less efficient runtime, you are guaranteed to find ways to improve your algorithm. Then all you have to do is optimize your solution by fixing the bottlenecks in your original solution. Always make sure you're ready to explain the overall runtime and space complexity of your code to the interviewer as they will ask you at some point. So now you have an actionable game plan to solve any lead code problem, but that then begs the question, how many problems should I solve when practicing? The simple answer is 150. No, seriously, that's it. Here's a list of questions you can solve on lead code. I'll even link it in the description below. Don't listen to those people who tell you you have to solve three, four, 500 problems just to get ready for interviews, or that you need to memorize solutions. That is one of the worst things you can do. My philosophy around studying for coding interviews has always been about quality rather than quantity. That's why I study coding patterns. Simply put, coding patterns are the underlying patterns and techniques most problems share. The beauty of coding patterns is that once you learn a pattern, you can apply it to solve a wide variety of problems. For example, once I learned this substring pattern, I was able to solve 30 other string problems with relative ease. By following pattern-based thinking, you not only increase your problem-solving ability, but also significantly cut back on your interview prep time. In fact, I believe so much in the power of coding patterns, it's why I've created Tech Interviews IO. It's the most comprehensive coding interview prep platform on the market, where we focus on teaching patterns and not memorizing solutions. On top of coding patterns, we also have in-depth training for behavioral questions, data structures, salary negotiation, and much more. Simply put, it's the platform I wish I had when I first started coding. If this sounds interesting to you, then check out Tech Interviews IO and try the free content on there completely risk-free. In any case, you now have a step-by-step -step plan you can follow for lead code. While being good at lead code and problem solving is necessary for coding interviews, it doesn't mean you won't make mistakes that'll hurt your chances of getting hired. There's so much to coding interviews beyond problem solving, that's why I know this video will help you out. It's about the five tips you can use to stand out from 99% of other candidates during an interview. If you have any questions or want me to make videos on another topic, let me know in the comments down below. Anyway, I hope you found the video helpful and I'll see you in the next one.